Welcome to AC Fundamentals Lesson 1, Part 2. You're here with Dr. Ken again, and we're looking at AC waveforms. In this particular case, we're looking at an oscilloscope display with 230 volts AC mains voltage waveform. It is the shape of a sine wave, and we often say it's sinusoidal, is the technical term. Now, I know the oscilloscope looks pretty uh, daunting to most people when they first see it. It's nowhere near as complex as you might think. It is just a very flash voltmeter. It's a voltmeter with two channels. It can measure and display two voltages at the same time. And it also displays plus and minus voltages together. So if you would look at the horizontal through the oscilloscope, above the line is positive, below the line is negative. So you can see this particular sine wave is increasing positive, coming back towards zero, then going negative, then going back towards zero, then going positive, so on and so forth. Uh, this knob measures or sets the scale for the vertical, so we can measure how many volts this is from zero to peak or from peak to peak. It also allows us to measure the time. So from where the, the wave crosses the zero, to where it crosses the zero at the same point again is called the period or the time and that scale is set by this knob over here on the amount of time or seconds per division it's normally in milliseconds per division so the horizontal scale is time the vertical scale is volts plus and volts minus So there are a couple different wave shapes. The first one you're going to come across is uh, the DC. So DC voltage here, uh, labelled A. You see where my cursor is. Again, zero volts. It's got a positive voltage, and it always does in the same direction. It never changes. A sine wave next to it, uh, B, of course, is very different. The sine wave, as we just saw on the oscilloscope, is increasing to a maximum value, back to a zero, down to a maximum negative, up to zero, and it does this over a certain period of time on the horizontal axis. A square wave now down in C, you can see here a square wave, it started as negative and suddenly goes positive, stays positive for a certain period of time, then suddenly goes negative then stays negative for a certain period of time, then goes positive, but it's still a wave and has a start position, say here and here. So it both has a voltage component and a time component, making it also a complex quantity. Our last one, our triangular wave, what we have here is a voltage that's ramping up to a max, ramping down to a minimum, ramping up to a max, but it's still doing it around center around zero volts, so we have a positive peak down to a negative peak, crosses back at zero. We also have a period, so again this is a complex waveform because it has both magnitude, in this case constantly changing, and it also has direction given by the angle. You'll notice, I'll just take you back to DC, there's never any angle because it's always on, always traveling in one direction, there is no angle. So there we have a DC voltage waveform, a sinusoidal waveform, a square waveform, and what is called a triangular waveform. We need to also learn some descriptors around waveforms. And uh, here we're learning around a triangular wave. It doesn't matter what shape wave you have. There are some basics that we need to learn. And the first is the peak value, and sometimes called the max value. So max is from zero volts to max positive, or zero to max or peak negative. So they're called the peak values. If we want to measure the voltage from the peak, positive to the peak, negative, it's called the peak to peak value. So peak to peak. And then on the horizontal scale, if you look at uh, the blue 
line now one cycle in this particular case it crosses at zero at this point where my cursor is and here it is crossing back over at the same point one full cycle later you'll notice it also crosses here at halfway through its cycle but that's not the full cycle the full cycle is back over here and that's called one cycle or one period it's a time taken for a complete cycle and the peak value is reached by the waveform and this is what an oscilloscope does for us it actually displays a voltage that's constantly changing and does that for us over a certain period of time so that's the important thing to remember here peak values and peak to peak values peak values can also be called max values once we have the period we don't normally talk about the period of the wave all that often we normally to describe the period using the word frequency so let's have a look at what is frequency one cycle of a wave form takes a certain time to complete and we call this the periodic time the number of complete cycles per second is called the frequency of the waveform is measured in Hertz and named after Heinrich Hertz who is a German physicist so frequency we use the lower case F is the periodic time and we use lower case T for time so the formula that you need to uh, understand is frequency equals one the one stands for one second divided by the time because the time is normally in fractions of a second so take a moment now to quickly get out your Ken's equation sheet and have a look and make sure you can find the formula for frequency of course we can transpose that formula we can change the F and the T because T is also equal to 1 divided by F so we can use this formula to find both frequency and time if we know the frequency we can find out the periodic time if we know the periodic time we can work out the frequency so let's do a little worked example we have a period of a waveform is 20 milliseconds so what is its frequency so time 20 milliseconds is 20 times 10 to the minus 3 the milli tells us it's times 10 to the minus 3 so what is the frequency our formula is F equals 1 divided by T so 1 divided by 20 times 10 to the minus 3 equals 50 Hertz we don't normally do the inversion that you can see here you can take the 10 to the minus 3 and make it 10 to the 3 so it's a it becomes 10,000 divided by 20 but on our calculators especially if you have a VPAM calculator you can just put the formula in complete and get 50 Hertz I suggest you uh, pause the video now and uh, punch that into your calculator to make sure you're able to actually do that little bit of math it also helps you on where to find the functionality on your calculator so here's another example this time we have to determine the period frequency peak voltage and peak to peak voltages of this particular waveform so here's our waveform so let's have a quick and careful look at it it's a sine wave it's going to maximum positive peak here it's going to maximum negative peak here its period is from the start through one complete cycle to here so we've now know where our peaks are we know where our peak to peak is and we know where our cycle is so how can we scale these off well the first thing we do is we go over to the voltage knob for the vertical axis and you'll notice that it's set on 10 volts so each vertical division is worth 10 volts so we've got 10 volts and 10 volts that means we've got 20 volts 0 to peak or 0 max we also have negative 10 volts in the opposite direction making our peak to peak voltage 40 volts so we've got 20 volts max or 20 volts peak and we've got 40 volts peak to peak 
Now we look on the horizontal and we've got one, two, three, four divisions. Do you notice that? So from here, one, two, three, four four divisions we go over and look at our sweep and it tells us that every one division is worth one millisecond so if we've got four divisions we've got four milliseconds so our period is four milliseconds so let's have a look at the solution our time per division is one millisecond and we've got four of them, so four times one millisecond obviously is four milliseconds. So that's nice and easy. We've got the, the uh, time base of our wave at four milliseconds. What's its frequency? So F frequency is one divided by T. So one divided by four times 10 to the minus three. We punch that into our calculator. We should get 250 Hertz fair bit faster than mains frequency. So now let's look at our voltages. The voltage per division was set at 10 volts. Our peak voltage, remember we had two divisions, so two times 10, so our peak voltage was 20 volts. And we described that as volts PK. And we, as I said before, we could also call that volts max. So our volts peak to peak will be 20 times 2 or 10 times 4, it doesn't matter. And that's our volts P-P, -P, meaning volts peak to peak, equals 40 volts. So let's just review that again. We had four divisions at one millisecond, giving us a time base of four milliseconds. One divided by four ended up being 250 hertz. We had two divisions of peak voltage, so we had 20 volts peak, giving us 40 volts peak to peak over the entire wave.